Hello everyone, Zane here and welcome to another Final Fantasy XIV video. Today I'm going to show you guys the best leave quests to do to make Gil in each expansion. Now remember that this is my personal opinion on which ones are best. You might have a different opinion, but as long as you're making Gil, that's all that matters. So this is based off of the materials that were required and how annoying they are to get. So not all of these jobs will be in each section. So we're starting off with a Rumber Born, and to unlock the leap quest in the beginning, you have to go to the Adventures Guild where you started at to unlock it there, then go to each area of each zone, and then do a unlocking quest there as well. So this is going to be for crafters only. So we're going to be starting off with armor. Now for this, you're going to be doing dealing with the tough stuff. Now if you pay attention to the plate at the top right, you'll see an old woman with a spinning wheel that is a triple turn in leave. While the other ones are going to be single target ones. So you're going to be doing this high quality turn ins to get double the gill times three. And then you're also going to be getting items here. These will differ depending on the leave quest and might rotate out if you do more. These ones here are ones that you can sell for 360 gill at a vendor. Also, you can get these from your grand company. So you're going to be doing cobalt ingots three times for triple turn-ins for armor. Goldsmith, you have so not doing this. This is going to be a single turn-in for 537 gil times two. And then you get three clear fluorite for 360 gil. And again, the items you get might, might differ. Next is Spelling Me Softly, a triple turn in for Raptor Leather, 498 gil, and you get another 360 gil item. Skipping over Weaver, going into Alchemist, you have Shut Up Already for Potent Silencing Potions. You get 602 gil times two for high quality, and a item that you can use to craft a weapon that is used in the Relic quest line. Or you can do not taking no for an answer for mega potions of strength for a triple turn in if you like. And you also get uh, the 360 item for that as well. And for Alchemist, you have Comfort Me with Mushrooms for 594 gil for a single turn in, plus three duck bones, my favorite item. Or Red Letter Day with the Rollenberry Lassie for a triple turn ins for less. And honestly, I would go with Culinarian Alt-Right for this instead of doing the other ones. Because these are the easiest ones to get and, of course, to do. So, in a Rumber Born, the Elite Quest Giver will be at one spot, but the Receiver of the items will be in another, which is going to be over here. Heaven's Word and Beyond, they stuck them both together, thankfully. So, if you don't like doing this constantly, you can ultimately skip a Rumber Born and just go for the Heaven's Word and Beyond. Remember that you only have 100 allowances per day, or altogether, and you only can get 6 per day, up to 17 days to get max. So keep uh, an eye on your allowances. If you go into timers, you'll find it right here. So now off to Heaven's Ward. Now for Heaven's Ward, the NPC for the leaf quest are going to be across from the Machinist Guild, or above the main right. So the NPCs are right next to each other for convenience. And these are going to be all single turn-ins because the triple turn-ins are a little bit more involved and a little bit more annoying to make. So we're going to be starting off with Carpenter with Birch Please with Birch Lumber. And as you can see, the gill increase has been massive since I remember born. Blacksmith is going to be through Thick and Thin. And this is going to involve adamantite nuggets. I believe the timer for this is as a slot at 1 a.m. and p.m. And you can get 1180 times 2. And some titanium ingots. Armor. This is going to be a little bit different. We're going to go down to level 54 as the bolt files for doing titanium nuggets. The titanium ore is a hidden item. So you might have to use the ability called... Lock on the Mountaineer to unearth it, but also make sure you have your map already collected for the day so that doesn't pop up as well. Now Goldsmith is going to be Hard Silver Nuggets. I think this is going to be right here. Level 56 needs more Prey Bell. 
the ingots, I believe you need to make the nuggets first. So let's double check that. Yes, yeah, so you need hard silver ore, which is hidden, and then the hard silver nuggets. So it's a little inconvenient, but that's Heaven's Order in a nutshell, really. So I believe we're skipping Weaver and Leatherworker, going straight to Alchemist. You're going to be doing filling in the blanks for Onrigus Inc. Now the ink, I believe you just need some items here. You just need the sand, the dragon's blood, and then the spring water. The dragon's blood you actually can get. I think the best place to get that is in the northeast section of the Churning Mists. It's my favorite area. And the other two can be gathered. Or you can have your retainer get these for you. The dragon's blood is pretty cheap on the market board, so you might want to look there as well. And then the last one is going to be Culinarian, which I honestly would recommend doing this. And that's going to be the Birch Syrup. Let's not get sappy. Because the Birch Syrup is pretty easy to get. It's not hidden. So Culinarian is your best bet if you want to blast through with all this. Alright. But that is going to be Heaven's Ward. Stormblood is going to be a hell of a lot easier. Because they kind of toned it down there. So I'll see you guys in Kugane. So here we are in Kugane, right across from the main at the right. You have to go to the western part of the story to get to the east side of the story in Stormblood and do the introductory quest to Kugane. The NPCs are right next to each other for convenience. So we're going to start off with Carpenter doing Zakova, my love, with Zakova Lumber. This is going to be a single target turn in. Blacksmith. Is going to be ingot to wing it, doing malab denim ingots for single turn ins. Armor smells of rich tamahagane for hagane ingots for single turn ins. For goldsmith, put the metal to the pedal for doing them ingots. Skipping Leatherworker and Weaver. For Alchemist, it's going to be making your mark for your first triple turn ins. So if you want to do Alchemist only, you can. So 613 times 2 times 3. And then for Culinarian, I believe it's level 62. A Friar Never Lies for Cottonseed Oil. And this is a triple turn ins. This is the easiest ones that you guys can do for Culinarian. So Culinarian or Alchemist is going to be my recommendation if you don't want to do the rest. So definitely level up your Alchemist and Culinarian to get the best Leaf Quests. Now off to the Crystarium for Shadowbringers. So here in the Crystarium, right across from the Crystalline Mean Crystal, you'll find it right here. And you do the introductory quest to the Crystarium before you can unlock the Leaf Quests. Starting off with Carpenter, we have Safety First with Lignum Mate Earrings. This is going to be a triple turn in because the other ones are different than this one. And this one has a Elizabeth Sewing for the plate. So you'll know that's the triple turn ins. Blacksmith, we have one of my favorites that I did back in Shadowbringers. The Keeping Loyalty with the Dwarven Mithril Files. You have armor, which I believe it's going to be right here. Titan bronze ingot, no scope. This is going to be a single turn in. For goldsmith, this is going to be copious crystal cannons, single turn in. Leather worker, finally. Peace and rest, the Atrocer Raptor leather. The good thing about the leathers and stuff like that, you can do fates to get the skins from the Bicol gemstones. So it makes it a little bit easier. Weaver. We have the Pixie Floss. That's going to be a tender table right here. And I believe the spindles of Pixie Floss comes in three as you craft them. 
alchemist, which is a little bit more annoying than the others. And that's going to be crafting concoctions at triple turn-in. The doses of commanding craftsman syrup. And then culinarian. I think we all know this one. A cookie for your troubles. The coffee biscuit fiasco of Shadowbringers. And I'll explain that to you guys in Endwalker. But this is the triple turn-in that everybody did because the coffee biscuits, biscuits stacked. Which was the best thing for it. But I did the files because they gave you more kill per 100 leaves. So cookie for your troubles is going to be for culinarian. Now, if we go into the crafter log. Looking for tate earrings, two lumbers, and a dwarven mithril nugget. For blacksmith, the files, two dwarven mithril ingots, and a cotton. For armor, titan bronze ingots, titan titanium ore, and of course the titan copper ore. The mana silver nuggets, silver ore, mana silver sand. Traps or Raptor, you need the yellow alumen plus the skins. Weaver, Pixie Floss. As you can see here, they give you three per for this four cottons. Alchemist, for the umbrellas, you're going to do by calling gemstones. Everything else is gatherable. And then culinary and coffee biscuits, you must uh, gather garden beets for the sugar and then the wheat for the flour. But these craft in multiples of three. So you don't have to worry about getting too many. But that is going to be for Shadowbringers. And now even though I already did one for Endwalker, we're going to go over Endwalker yet again. So I'll see you guys in Old Charlayan. And last but not least is going to be Endwalker. So right at the Scholar's Harbor, across from the Summoner Bell, is where you're going to find the Gleaner Leaves. And you must do the introductory quest to Old Charlayan before you can unlock this. The NPC to receive is going to be right here. So stand right here between these two pillars and then go back and forth. Now notice that the leaf quest only has two. Just because the coffee biscuit fiasco of Shadowbringers took away the triple turn-ins because we were making way too much gill. Me, Ash10, a bunch of other YouTubers made videos about that and Square Enix took notice and then took away triple turn-ins going forward. Otherwise, they can just reduce the amount of gill and still give us triple turn-ins. But that is the coffee biscuit fiasco of Shadowbringers. So, the integral reward is for Carpenter. The integral necklace of crafting. Blacksmith is going to be Mangalomania for manganese ingots. Armor is going to be 84 armoire aftercare. The bismuth ingots. One of my favorites for Goldsmith was Star Athletes, because of the mass amount of gill they gave. The Star Quartz wristbands of aiming. Good way to get your wind crystals. Weaver had a polished purchase for snow linen. Alchemist, a practical command, the commanding craftsman's draft. A lot of good gill from that one. And Culinarian, Mountain Steeped, for that T that we cannot pronounce, for Culinarian. So for Endwalker, my favorites were Culinarian, Alchemist, and Goldsmith. So those are all of the lead quests that I recommend doing in each of the different expansions, depending on where you are. Remember, do not let your allowances cap, because that is free money going down the drain. All right. So that is going to be it for this, and I will see you guys in my next one. So happy crafting. And that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share for more Final Fantasy XIV content and help with the YouTube algorithm. If you guys want to support my channel even further, consider becoming a Patreon supporter, YouTube member, or support me on Ko-Fi. Links in the description down below. And a huge thank you to all my YouTube members, Patreon supporters, and Ko-Fi members. And a huge extra thank you to the members on screen. So until next time, we you for walking the glorious light of Lord Bahamut. And always remember to keep forging ahead. Take care.